the increase uh, the volume. I, you know, my, my time when I'm working with someone is way more efficiently used because they're telling you what to do compared to the time when you're by yourself. Mm -hmm. and, but then, in the time when you're by yourself, you're thinking, am I just wasting, or like, wasting a time? Like, could, could my time be better used either earning money? But then, then I know that when I'm at work, when I'm earning money, that I hate being at work, even if I enjoy doing it. And um, then okay, so. when, you know, you have to, on an ongoing basis, be creating this alternate reality um, where you are supposed to be demonstrating that you are this new hot thing. It's like a demand from, I don't know, galleries and society, whoever, you know, to be noticed, to be um, ca to be counted as, uh, you know, a good artist, a proactive artist, you need to be on Instagram, of course you, you have a website, and then also minimal of Instagram, um, and constantly be creating this um, fake sort of presence that you're this amazing new hot thing. As an artist, you produce sometimes, but you don't always produce. But even when you're not producing, you're still kind of thinking about your art, especially being kind of like freelance all the time. You kind of do it when you can, but also you got to make money and you got to hustle. Oh yeah, this is my uh, number of uh, writing, uh, different yeah. writing here. And uh, this is uh, my uh, many tab. I find it really interesting being an artist. Uh, so this thing on my head, uh, it's called an ostrich pillow. I bought it to use in, in a performance once, but then never really did. And I guess, I guess it started as some kind of joke, but Ever since this app, I used to have like an app for meditation uh, that you had to subscribe to and pay money for. Ever since that, ever since that subscription ran out, um, and I don't really know if I can afford to to resubscribe at the moment. So I, I just it, it also started as a joke, but I just sometimes wear this pillow when I get really stressed out. And it actually somehow helps and is very calming. And I also started to smoke weed again, which I don't really know yet if it really helps. And I'm, at the moment, I'm I got invited to to participate in multiple shows in the next two months, I think that all somehow, like they're all group shows and they all deal with anxiety and stress and burnout and depression and all these like neoliberal symptoms. <laughs> and I'm actually thinking about canceling one because I don't really know if I can make all the deadlines. Because now being an artist is a career and, and even though for the most part it doesn't pay you, but you're paying with your time and with the actual money to create the, the works and then sometimes you sell the works but if you do performance art for instance you can't really sell it 
I wonder if I should spend less money on food. Or at least think about it less. I worry that I'm taking too long. I'm not churning them out. And what do I have to show for my time? Does everyone know that I'm here every night? As you wake up, slipping into consciousness and leaving your dreams behind, that is a moment caught in between, a fleeting moment of nothingness. It's the moment before getting out of bed, the moment before preparing yourself for the day, it's the moment before breakfast, washing, putting on your work clothes, packing your studio clothes, your books, keys, wallet, lunch. It's the moment before checking your phone for missed calls, texts, emails. It's the moment before calling, texting, emailing. It's the moment before you get annoyed at yourself for spending too much time on your phone. It's the moment before you run down the road because you're late again. It's the moment before you rush to top up your oysters, you miss your train. It's the moment before the daily chat and work routine. It's the moment before the to-dos and ideas echo around your head again and again as you work your way through one of your three jobs. It's the moment before you drag yourself off to work to your studio, before wondering what to do, before the actual doing bit. It's the moment before buying onions or milk or bread on the way home, before dinner, before the cups of tea, before making some more work. It's the moment before the pub and the private views. It's the moment before you feel really, really tired. It's a moment of guilt-free nothingness. Just take in a big, deep breath. How many of us take the time to notice our environment, to look up from our phones, to get out of our heads, and to notice the natural wonders that surround us? And I'm here to teach you some simple techniques to feel more connected with the world around you. And the beauty of these techniques is they not only help us to appreciate nature, but they also help us to feel less stressed, less anxious in our everyday lives. The headspace is like just a meditation one where like you start off doing like three minutes and you do ten minutes. You like build up your time um, and it's like someone talking to you as if you're doing a meditation class. And it's really like, I, I, do, I found it useful but I don't do it regularly. Like I just did it a bit and that helped me and then I haven't done it a lot recently. But then I got stressed out because it kept sending me messages to do it, which was then like more overwhelming again. Because you're like, why are you telling me to do like this? Because that's actually stressful. And then the, the ironic thing, you have to go on your phone to do it. It's like, you have to open your phone to do this. Health money is kind of like focused on you know well let's 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 you know, either get people back to work or if people are in work and struggling let's give them a CBT course and of course we do that alongside the meritocracy uh, myth fantasy telling everyone that everything is possible for all and it's all really equal so what does that produce well it produces anger despair it makes people cut themselves it makes people, makes people burn themselves it makes people kill themselves it makes people feel alienated low depressed agitated dissociated because life's so unbearable actually you know how can one stay with it it makes people anxious it makes people demonstrably mad at this moment in history we package that up and we label it as mental illness it's kind of more socially acceptable to have a you know to present oneself as having a diagnosis than go neoliberalism fucked me up we have ideas of self-help that come in you know it's much easier for governments yeah to have the idea of mental illness than to look at the causes of people's suffering <laughs>